And of course, Israel there speaking on that Gaza resolution that was passed by the UN. Of course, a watered down version, as we are told uh, by both US and Israeli officials. Taking a live look over Gaza at this hour, I do want to get back to this breaking news that we have been following here all throughout the morning as we are learning that 14 Israeli soldiers have been killed in combat in the Gaza Strip over this weekend. Now, the health ministry in the Hamas controlled Gaza saying that 100 66 people were killed in the coastal enclave this weekend, and it is important to note that the health ministry does not distinguish between militant and civilian deaths. A deadly weekend in the war, which did begin with the attack by Hamas terrorists on Israel back on October 7th, killing 1,200 people and leaving more than 200 people in captivity there. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner with the Israel Defense Forces joining us now live to talk more about the latest developments here and and as always, Lieutenant Colonel, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Hi, Josh. Good to be here. So the first thing I want to talk about here is that we did learn not too long ago that 14 Israeli soldiers had died in combat there in Gaza over this weekend. What can you tell me about what did happen? Josh, this is the nature of the battlegrounds that we are facing in Gaza. Um, in uh, two separate, separate incidents, uh, our forces uh, were faced by terrorist, terrorist activities um, and indeed uh, either killed in exchanges of fire, killed in action, or killed in uh, uh, booby traps and, and things like this. Um, this is how Hamas has weaponized the battleground. Uh, the urban arena is a huge challenge for any professional military, and this is the unfortunate reality that we face. Um, I would say it doesn't change our determination to dismantle and destroy Hamas according to our military goals, the goals of the war, uh, and bring back the hostages, each and every one of them. Um, you know, we have to operate in, in this area. We need to do it cautiously. And our progress on the battleground is in accordance with the threat and characteristics of urban warfare. And I want to show this video that was released here by Israeli forces just yesterday. Can you tell me about the strike that took out the man who is believed to be responsible for the supply and production of weapons for Hamas? How significant of a move is this? Of course, every part of the puzzle that dismantles and destroys Hamas's operational capability. So this guy um, it was a smuggler, a, a manufacturer and a, a dealer of weapons uh, in the Hamas institutions. And therefore, he was a legitimate target. And indeed, uh, we identified him and took him out. Uh, this is the nature of the battle that is ongoing from our perspective. Anybody involved with Hamas's capabilities, with its, with its building its forces capabilities is a legitimate target. And therefore, um, we will utilize our intelligence and operational capabilities to take them out. I know there's been a lot of discussion about taking a more targeted approach when over in Gaza. Has that been the case? Has it been more targeted than maybe in weeks past? Our operations are all military necessity based. Um, it does the, the mobilization of ground forces are against specific targets, the specific hubs of control, the specific command and control positions, the specific at centers of gravity of Hamas, wherever, wherever they have utilized to conduct and command their activities from, wherever they're hiding out, wherever they are utilizing perhaps positions to hide the hostages. These are our positions. These, everything is very, very focused around and mission orientated. Um, of course, the, the, these, the reality on the ground is as we progress forward, um, the vastness of the amount of ta targets, the potential targets, uh, goes down, and the 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 apparent um, operations seem to be less widespread. I wouldn't read into that too much. I would definitely understand that as the operation moves forward, uh, the nature will be one where it will be less co less intense, uh, less uh, um, uh, I would say high. Um, uh, level high vast amount of forces the need for a vast amount of forces will uh, will be less uh, uh, necessary and as such we will continue to operate in order to achieve our goals 
and we've talked about this in the days after those three IDF, or I'm sorry, those three hostages that were taken by Hamas back on October 7th were mistakenly killed by the IDF. Uh, there were some, I guess, words that were shared with IDF troops in a way to ensure that something like that doesn't happen again. So what is being done within the IDF and, you know, with the troops to make sure that there isn't a similar situation as we know more hostages are being held there in Gaza. This is a very painful incident, a, a tragedy. Uh, truly, the, the soldiers are there in part to bring home the hostages. Uh, of course, the, the, the reality of the battleground is one where Hamas has weaponized the civilian arena. Hamas doesn't distinguish for themselves from the civilians. Um, uh, they aren't wearing any types of uniform or insignia. Um, and it can create a, a situation on the ground of uncertainty. Uh, add that to the tension that the forces are under, and there is definitely room for mistake. Uh, and as we rightly said, uh, very clearly, the forces in this case operated in breach of the rules of engagement of the IDF. Our chief of staff was very clear, the Lieutenant General Herzi, Levy, Herzi Halevi was very, very clear on his message to the forces, even a Hamas terrorist that lays down his weapon and raises a white flag should not be shot. Um, so that is the, the guiding principles of the IDF. We have distri distribu distributed lessons learned from this tragic, tragic incident to the forces, to all of the forces, um, so that we can be better prepared if this type of reality faces us once more. Uh, our goal is to bring back the hostages, every last one of them, and therefore, we need to be able to identify and distinguish them from terrorists if they are met on the, on the battleground. Has the goal of the IDF and of Israel to permanently eliminate Hamas, has that changed in any way over the last uh, two and a half months? No, not at all. Hamas will not be able to manage, dis uh, guide, govern the uh, reality in the Gaza Strip precisely because we know they can't be trusted. This is an organization, a terrorist government, a terrorist entity that utilized all of the tools of government in order to build their terrorist army, in order to build uh, explosive drones, in order to amass a huge rocket arsenal. They can't be trusted and therefore they have to go. We talk a lot about Hamas during the war, but it's important to note that there's also attacks that are coming from Hezbollah and from the Houthis, correct? Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing every day and today as well in the north on the border with Lebanon, we've seen an increase in activities by Hezbollah. They are jeopardizing the sanctity of Lebanon. They should they are definitely should be watching very cautiously about what we're doing to Hamas in the south. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we are maintaining a defensive posture, but increasing our activities against Hezbollah when they are attacking us, um, preempting strikes when they are planning to, uh, and the same goes for H the Houthis that are launching cruise missiles against Israel and jeopardizing the uh, naval routes in uh, in the Red Sea. Um, so they are definitely a menace to security, to stability, and to the sanctity of um, of the region. Uh, I would say these players, these uh, menaces, are um, being utilized cynically by Iran, uh, who is pulling the strings behind um, Hezbollah, behind uh, the Houthis. Uh, the weaponry that they are using is definitely uh, based or uh, supplied by Iran. And there is this uh, invisible hand that is guiding um, Hamas, uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis um, in order to uh, un unstabilize, destabilize the, the region. Um, we are determined to protect ourselves, and we're determined to make sure that these organizations cannot threaten Israeli sanctity. All right. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner there with the Israel Defense Forces. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to join us here and break down the latest. Is there anything else you want to add before I let you go? No, it's um, very, uh, I would say, very emotional days. It's uh, Christmas Eve, so I'd want to wish you and all of your viewers a Merry Christmas. Uh, we hope that the new year will bring us peace 
uh, we will make sure that we can operate in order to bring that peace to the people of this region, to Israel, and, uh, and restore safety and security to all of us. All right. Thank you again for taking the time to join us here, especially on Christmas Eve, and break down the latest. We appreciate it. Thank you, Josh.